And hey, hello, 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 Steve. How are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Welcome to It's the good. Avatar podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm really me. happy to have you here. Yeah, I'm really happy to have you here. And you know, for those who doesn't know, let's do a little intro. Like Steve, he's a uh, basically the tech guy he has his own company and i want to you know you know other than me i want you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background you have background with music with tech like uh, just uh, you know share a little bit about your journey with us today yeah sure um well the company i work for is not my own um okay. but i used to own uh, <laughs> companies i used to have a production uh -huh. uh, recording studio business that i ran with a mate in sydney And so we used to do uh, very high-end uh, music productions for artists and bands. And, um, and then I went and did a post-grad uh, post in education and became a teacher, started teaching technology to schools all around Australia. Um, and I got very much involved in coding and things like game design, uh, which became not just a passion for me, but something that I had to teach from mm. prep, which is basically kindergarten all the way through to year 12. And yeah. so it's a lot of fun because you're finding different <laughs> ways to engage students and try and get them excited about coding, which is, yeah, you know, coding can be fun, can also yeah. be very tedious, as you probably Definitely. know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, Steve, I really, yeah. I, I love that you do have the background with technology, you know, because... Hyperpad, we are a tool that we are trying to bring more into the educational side. So talking about the educational side and with coding and visual coding, could you share with us, you know, you know, you, you, we talked previously and you're really passionate about Hyperpad, but could you share with us today, like some of the things that you love about Hyperpad and how you see it as an educational tool for us? Yeah, so a lot of the coding I did was kind of line-based um, And one of the frustrating things about that, especially with very young students, is it takes a really long time for those students to develop a game and develop some kind of uh, thing that looks good and sounds good. It takes a really long time. Yeah. So it can take years to learn. Like if you're learning C+, learning, uh, there's not many school students that, that use that in primary, some in high school, a lot of them in, in tertiary environments. So I had to try and find ways that I can engage them really quickly, even if I have like a two-hour workshop you know some yeah. teachers get years with their students I, i might only get half a day with the student mm -hmm. and so i'd searching 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 and I, and i looked at lots of different apps and then i came across hyperpad probably about seven years ago and uh yeah. as soon as i started playing with it i was like okay this is this is really what i need to use in my classes and schools uh because wow. it was just so easy to start coding mm -hmm. with And you can add your own content instead of just using mm -hmm. the built-in content from, from yeah. the existing app. And that's mm -hmm. one of the main issues I had with, with students is, so, you know, miss, what, what do I, you know, I can't add my own character. I can't add my own sound. I, I, I like coding, but I want to use my own characters and I want to do my mm -hmm. own storyline. And that mm -hmm. is something that you can absolutely do with Hyperpad, which is why I love the app. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I really like that, you know, you are, you are an artist, you do make your own music. So the fact that, you know, art and like gaming design and coding coming together, is just very harmonical, right? And, and like, you know, I, did you ever had a chance to like make your own sound for like, you know, one of like one of your games and, you know, create yeah, like a yeah. gaming, like a, a music game? Because I know there's a few music games on Hyperpad, so... Yeah, I, I'm obsessed with sound and creating soundscapes and I, I, mm -hmm. compositions. I used to be in a professional uh, band. We used to tour America and Australia. And wow. I use lots of programs. The Garage Band is a very basic one that I use to teach, but I use like Logic Pro and used to use lots of other ones, Pro Tools. And so it was amazing uh, to have the functionality in Hyperpad of being able to own your, add your own soundtracks. So... I could teach the students how to use GarageBand on the iPad and create a soundtrack or a soundscape very quickly. And then you can export that directly into Hyperpad, which yeah. is incredible. There's not many yeah. apps on the iPad that I don't know if there's any other app that allows you to do that mm -hmm. through coding. And yeah, so, sure. yeah, all of that expertise I was able to use from my previous production company, um, Crash Symphony Studios, I was able to 
utilize some of those skills with the students and, and start creating your own sounds. And then obviously, yeah. as you know, Clarissa, they have a built-in function for creating your own sound effects, mm -hmm. which is not yeah. for creating music, but certainly for creating explosions and, and all kinds of, you know, jumping yeah. to make the Mario Brothers sound, all, all those kinds of things. So, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it was, it's such a great function. Um, and again, for sure. that that's built into Hyperpad, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see that you have your piano there. Maybe at some point you should play some piano for us. <laughs> I would love yeah, to hear there's it. Yeah, actually, there's actually two. If I dip that down, there's a Oh, my God, that's so cool. But I know it's yeah, off yeah. topic, I but, you know, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> no, anyways, anyone watching? Oh, anyone watching here today, please ask questions for Steve. He's a, you know, he keeps teaching all about tech and hyperpads to, like, everyone. So if you guys have questions for him, Please ask. I know there's few people watching us today, but yeah. So you know, I want to ask more questions, Steve. So and to sure. add into your experience, like, could you tell us, you know, uh, what are some things that students were mostly excited when they were when you were teaching about, like, in schools when you're using Hyperpad as a tool for visual coding? Where are some mm. of the things that the students really like? You know, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the apps that I had been using prior yeah. to Hyperpad, you kind of had to go with other people's storylines or there were very, very basic storylines that the student mm -hmm. couldn't really change and edit very much. And yeah. so they couldn't add their own characters, they couldn't add their own sounds, and they couldn't really create their own story storylines. So when I start a session of Hyperpad with students, I, I usually start with, hey, what, what are your favorite games? And, you know, you get Sonic the Hedgehog, um, Super Mario Brothers, I mean, yeah, Super Mario Brothers is old now, but a lot of them know Mario Brothers and and uh, and some of them like the three D games, and that's all fine. I say, yeah, what do you like about these games? And we talk about game objectives, and so I say, okay, if you're going to write a storyline, I want you to write down all the game objectives. And I say, if you're mm -hmm. looking at Super Mario Brothers, what are some of those game objectives? And they say, you know, you have to rescue Princess Peaches, you have to collect coins, you have to not fall off the platform. Uh, defeat Bowser. So there's, there's lots and lots of objectives in the game that make it really fun and interesting. Yeah. And yeah. so I've had some students come up like, hey, Mr. Steve, look at my game. It's awesome. And it's just a, <laughs> a ball bouncing around the screen. It has zero objectives, <laughs> it's nothing to do. And I said, look, it might look good, but without objectives, it's, it's kind of pointless, mm -hmm. right? It's very boring. Yeah. And so Hyperpad enables you to go through storylines with them. It's a very creative process. You get them to jot down all of their objectives, jot down their storyline. And so before we even begin coding, they've got all this work that they have to do. And some, to some yeah. schools, they have to do that work before I arrive. They know they have to have a storyline. They need to have at least 10 objectives. And they need to have some graphics and uh -huh. characters that they might have made themselves. And wow. they can use Keynote and Procreate and all these amazing programs to create those beautiful characters and images and before we even start coding. And so this is the main reason that I got into mm -hmm. Hyperpad in the first place because of mm -hmm. this function. And without it, it just becomes, a, a, you know, you're just playing with someone else's design and someone else's uh, objectives yeah. and game and mm -hmm. storylines. So each yeah. student wants, they want to be creative. They have their own yeah. ideas for stories. They have their own ideas for what their characters might look like. You know, I've got a for game sure. that I made called um, African space, which I didn't put on. There, I just did it for myself and for my schools. Yeah. But all oh my the characters I made from scratch, and all the sounds mm -hmm. and all the soundtrack I made, all, all on the iPad. And that's really I showed really the cool. students how to do that, and they love it. They absolutely love it. Mm. I I love that. You know, before I got into you know the game world, like I would, I never, I didn't even know how creative it is. Like the whole process of building your game. Like I'm. I go to the Discord community uh, on Hyperpad that XR Codes, he runs that. He's one of our ambassadors. And every day they're posting arts. They're posting like their soundtracks that they make. They collaborate together and then they make it and they make a game and Who's their storyline. Oh, uh, he's right here making a comment. XR Codes. He's oh, one of RX our Codes. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. 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 He's actually yeah, just yeah. said um, he loves that it's very versatile. Um, yeah. Some of the games that your students have made. I mean, if you want to share my screen, I can I can show you um, something yeah, I'm working on. Yeah, I'll share. Students I'll recently. share with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, okay. So this this was um, 
the game African Space Animals. So the objectives, I, I mean, we talked to the students, hey, what would be fun? And they're like, you know, have some African animals because they study animals and um, environmental ad adaptations as part of the curriculum. And I try to link all the stuff that we do with curriculum-based outcomes. So it's not just having fun in their spare time, but the teachers and the principals can buy in and they can actually implement Hyperpad into their learning programs. This is an extremely important point to make. Mm -hmm. And so this particular game, you know, um, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see this little character here. Um, that is a little so cool. Zebra. I just made <laughs> using Kino, just shapes in Kino. Oh, my God. And so I teach God. them how to just add shapes in there. And then, you know, these, like, this is a, like a weird, weird robot spider that I made. And so that once so they learn cute. how to use the shapes in Kino, they can uh -huh. export those shapes as transparent PNGs, right? Uh, so you, know, you love JPEGs and all the different TIFFs. But PNG obviously has the ability to do transparency. So then when you import them into Hyperpad, you can have those as good guys, bad guys. You can have them as stationary objects that don't interact with the physical environment and the physics engine of Hyperpad. Because Hyperpad has all these built-in physics engines that when you yeah. create a new game, you can have the, the, the gravity happening on the Y axis. And, uh, yeah. and, and, you know, you can change it so it's on the X axis if it was underwater and you wanted to flow through like an yeah. ocean current. And so, I mean, I'll just quickly play the game so you can you won't be able to hear it oh, okay. but you can at least see it so you know i've got like a jet pack and that is it's got so a cool. it's got a, a scoring system a health bar in the top the uh, top oh right corner my God. and if you hit it the spider like you can see game. my health bar goes down yeah so uh, all, this is kind of one of the uh templates that i i, I created to start with to, to get the students to sort of start creating really quickly um you know and, and, and you have to collect ship parts so that's a ship part so that gets uh -huh. added. So you've got to go around. And, and that's part of the objective. You have to find the ship parts so they can rebuild their spaceship and get back to Earth because they're lost in space, right? And the, the students wow. are like, oh, they have to go and build their spaceship. And, you know, they make up different worlds and they have ideas for different stages that you can create. And obviously, if you, if you fall off, you know, the, the level starts again or they have a point system where it has to start again. So, wow. yeah, this was... Um, uh, uh, fun it's a fun game it looks really fun and it is fun uh -huh. but it there's fun, so yeah. many learning objectives um we get into mm -hmm. this thing that we teach in um com computational uh you know when you're creating stuff they have if then else statements and if statements so we might say hey um you know if i touch the jump button then the character jumps and they have to write it out in pseudo code first they have to write it out in english or whatever their language is convert it to pseudo code language and then even create flow charts um can you still see my screen um, yeah i might just quickly really, show you really cool. like a quick, a quick uh -huh. example so this was um okay you know this is an example of objectives with super mario brothers right and i okay i, I, I talked through that with them can you see that yeah see it's that? really cool on screen Oh, you can see that, okay. No, no, I can I see thought, it, yeah, yeah. Okay, my, my screen. <laughs> no hyper, no iPad. So. Yeah, cool. cool. Um, so, for example, they make up their own pseudocode for their objects. Uh -huh. So, in this case, M might be Mario, C might be coin, or in the, uh -huh. the zebra might be Z. And right. you, you create problems and then you solve the problems with the students. So, in this particular uh -huh. case, you have a basic if statement that says if – Mario collides with coin or if M uh -huh. collides with C, then what, what happens? And so they have to go, okay, well, if we have a, co a coin count, then you have to add one or two to that co coin count. And so that's a very, very simple yeah. program. But if they can't solve it on paper, then how are they going to program that into their game? And so this, yeah. this is a really, really important thing to think about. And then the secondary students, the high school students, I get them to convert the pseudo code into an easy to visualize flowchart. So in this particular okay. case, you've got if M collides with C and it's true, it goes to the right and that's coin count coin going up. If it goes to the left, it's false. Nothing happens to the coin count. Oh, yeah. cool. That's yeah. so cool. Such a, kind of great way way basic, but... Such a great way to learn math. Such a great way. You can do it with anything. So I get them to do it with yeah. milk, you know. If milk is less than 10%, we need to go to the shops and get more milk so we can have cereal, right? Some people don't oh use milk God, with the cereal, so but I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> same, same. You can do it with petrol. <laughs> you can do it with any problem. And uh -huh. that's part of encoding is all problem solving. 
And yes. then being able to use Hyperpad is that it's not just creating problems, solving problems, but you can create mm-hmm. objectives for the game and then you can create amazing graphics and sound, which makes the game come alive and gives, gives the students an incredible immersive experience that they can still learn to problem solve and code, but they get to see the game and interact with the game. It's one wow. of the best workshops I run. They love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I would be in, in your workshop, I, I would be like having a really fun time. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I hope awesome. so. Hopefully you're having fun now. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's great to see like, you know, just just the experience that you have and then sharing that with us today just because a lot of teachers, you know, they feel they feel very like like scared to like have this tool uh, because they don't want to they think it's too hard. They think it's hard to teach their kids because it's a tool that like they're not aware of, right? But it's 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 actually really interactive, you know, like mm. So Funny yeah, what, what would be? Because, yeah. <laughs> well, one, no, one like I would biggest, just be like one. What? what sorry, <laughs> interrupting you. Well, one of the biggest Keep issues with it. teachers is the fear uh-huh. factor, because their students seem to know more about technology than than they do, right? So yeah. they they think, oh my my. In, in most cases, for most teachers, they think their students know more about technology than they do, so they're yeah. worried to learn the tool. This is Hyperpad is a, a great teaching tool. And, mm-hmm. But they're, they're fearful of it because they think they're going to be embarrassed by it. But yeah. when I go into schools and institutions, I, I, I say to them, you don't need to be fearful of this tool. You need to learn enough that you can show the tool to the students and, you know, you're going to have guide sheets and things like that that come, you know, mm-hmm. come with it in the background. And the students will go off and learn it themselves if they like it enough. They'll spend a lot of time yeah. learning the tool and mm-hmm. refining that tool so they can come up with their own games and their own solutions to problems. And they, and they don't need to hold the teacher's hands. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. The teacher shouldn't have to spoon feed them every single bit of information. Yeah. This is a problem I have with classic institutions is that they spoon mm-hmm. feed them everything. But the students are creative and they should yeah. be able to try and solve problems on their own with help and guidance, but Definitely. certainly to try and do it on their own. And by doing mm-hmm. that... They can use their creative, you know, juices and their creative processes to come up with amazing things that you and I wouldn't even think about. Yeah. And this is why I love Hyperpad because it enables them to do that, enables the teachers to have an extra tool. Yeah. Definitely. I I have a bit of experience teaching. I don't have like a, you know, education background with that, but I did have a chance to run like an in-person hyperpad workshop last year. And like the same thing, I personally ran the workshop, but you know, I didn't know everything about hyperpad. You know, I did, I just start like working for hyperpad recently. I didn't, I don't come from a software or coding background. So I was still able to do the workshop, but then I was, I did a challenge for them. I'm like, yeah, right. Like I was like, here is a challenge. You guys build your games and then seeing like you seeing what they made it. It was amazing. They were like super intimidated by it. They were like, Oh my God, Chris, I don't know how to do that. And then sometimes they ask me questions and I'm like, figure it out this is the manual <laughs> but yeah. you know yeah yeah and Seeing what, again when what i'm in classes i see me. the teachers struggle and i say well little mm-hmm. jimmy he, he knows how to do it well you know little michelle she already knows how to do that why don't you go and speak to her get her to show you and they teach each other and that's a beautiful thing mm-hmm. when you give them the tool you show them an outline maybe some basic workflows like i just you know go through some if then else statements and then show them how to connect that to Hyperpad. Because if I go, go back into the game and I click on any of those functions, every single function can be extracted and connected to the game objectives and those basic yeah. if-then statements and, and you know, flow charts and things, every single thing. And so yeah. when you show them one or two or three, they start to come up with their own very, very quickly. And the teacher doesn't need to know every single function of Hyperpad because mm-hmm. Hyperpad has a lot of functionality, more yeah. than what most schools will ever need. I mean, mm-hmm. what school is going to need, uh, you know, quadratic equa- equa- equations when they're doing their physics? Maybe they do. And maybe, you know, I've used it before, but it's, it's something that like a, a grade three student is probably not going to need to know. But it's there if yeah. they need it. 
but all the basic functions of creating a game mm-hmm. are there ready for them at their disposal. Mm-hmm. And um, yes. there's not, look, all the other coding apps that I've pretty much used on, not just the iPad, but PCs and Mac, you have to know how to code, you know, Swift or C++ or C++. There's lots of pr- programs, uh, Python, and they're great. I'm not saying don't learn those languages. They're great languages to learn. Yeah. But you don't need to to start being creative and coming up with a game, especially like a platform mm-hmm. 2D game in, in Hyperpad, very, very quickly. We're talking within hours, not within months, yeah. within hours. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And what would be some or an advice that you would give to someone that other than teachers, like someone that is just starting, you know, someone that doesn't have a lot of software background or, you know, maybe kids mm. or like, you know, someone that it's, it's not tech. Like what advice would you say like to get into the game development world? Like, Well, I have to say that, you know, even though I run a, uh, a studio, a production company, it, I, you know, I was really good at sound engineering, but I had no idea about coding. I didn't even like mm-hmm. maths that much. I didn't really feel like school maths was relevant to what I wanted to do, right? Everything relevant, really. But, mm-hmm. but back when I was in school, I didn't really care about maths. Um, I cared much more about music and, and, you know, as in advanced computers and advanced yeah. music because that's all I thought I needed to know. Mm-hmm. But then I come into the world of teaching technology and I'm, I'm given this big role of, you know, being head of professional learning. It's kind of my job to, to learn. And it's very daunting when you don't think you know anything. But mm-hmm. then you realize how easy it is once you start to dabble with Hyperpad and you start to create and put things together. You realize, number one, you don't need to be a math genius. You don't <laughs> need to be experienced with coding to, to run it. Yeah. And if you are a, a visual learner like I am, like a bit mm-hmm. more creative, then it kind of adheres to both. It, it helps those creative people use their creative skills and implement it into the game very, very quickly. So I think most of the people on this channel have probably already seen Hyperpad. I don't need to show them how easy it is to create special effects and sound. So I'm happy to do that in another stream. But yeah. if, mm-hmm. if you are creative, you can start cre- getting all those characters. You might have been working on a comic book or some visual arts programs. You can put them as backgrounds. You can put them as main characters. You might have made mm-hmm. a, an animal. Great. You can extract that put it into the game, make it into a character, and then start shaping your game around that character very, very quickly. And in my mm-hmm. opinion, and I'm not like a genius, um, but I, I can see how easy this <laughs> is even for my young students. I've done this with year ones, right? Wow. So this is not just for high school or, or yeah. teachers. I've done this with year one all the way through to year 12. And I've actually even done it with tertiary institutions as well. And I just That's change... Amazing my objectives mm-hmm. with them so you know to not make it uh-huh. too advanced so i'm not going to talk about right. quadratic equations with a, a, a grade one right it's too, too advanced but i have yeah. taught about like the x you know you've got your x axes and your y axes how that's really important in a 2d game and how gravity works all those yeah. things are important for them to know and i've had teachers say they don't even know how to spell their name properly how are you going to talk to them about gravity and x y every single student that I've ever taught this concept to. and I've drawn it on the board. In fact, they if understand. I just open Keynote, if you want to share the screen just very quickly, yeah, yeah. Sure, um, I'll show you one of the screens that I that I would use with them. This one here, right? I'll just play that. Uh-huh. Can you see that screen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, it's just you can't see that. I can see it. I can see it. You can see yeah. the X, Y? Okay. Yeah, I yeah. can't see it mm-hmm. on mine. Yeah. Um, so this concept is very mm-hmm. basic to a teacher, but to a student that's never seen this before, it's like, oh, what's this all about? And then I say, you know, think about gravity. If you drop an apple, and this is your y-axis, and if you turn up the gravity, then you will have a faster result if you drop something in the game. And they get it. They get it every single time for any age. And so these, what would be considered advanced concepts for a young student, they become relevant mm-hmm which makes it engaging for them, they start to implement it into their game and they are all over it every time. Yeah. I've never had a student and you know, struggle. So. And that's, that's like, doesn't matter the age, I feel like. It's like I'm like, you know, 
23 years old and I'm learning concepts right now. I'm not, I don't know much about math either, but you know, hearing you talking about these things now, it's just clicking in my brain. Yeah, it totally makes sense, you know, because, yeah. you know, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, the, I'm very passionate yeah, about amazing. having that because yeah. of what you said. Oh, it makes sense. And when you see, just like you're going, oh, this is awesome. Like, yeah, I can see. And that's what the teachers, that's how they respond. Mm -hmm. And the students, even more so they are just like their eyes light up and they they become like these little they just magnets just drawing in the information and mm. then you watch them create and they come up yeah. with, with games very very quickly and it's very rewarding as a teacher to see that and yeah i wouldn't be able to do that anywhere near as easy without hyperpad because there's a lot of other apps i'm not going to name those apps but Mm -hmm. You know, they're very focused on very specific things like decoding language and right. they forget mm -hmm. to include the whole process of game creation Creating. and game design. Game and design, HyperPad yeah, right. includes all of these creative processes, not just the coding. And that's mm -hmm. an extremely important point with HyperPad. Yeah. I don't work for HyperPad. I've never been paid yeah. a cent by HyperPad. I don't have commissions from HyperPad. Mm -hmm. The only reason I talk about HyperPad is because I've had an extremely good experience teaching it in the education systems here in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, uh, C, for sharing all these amazing things. You know, I wanted to go back to the literacy part of the of the game design. It's like literally mm -hmm. the fact that you the most successful games are the ones that do have a storyline, as you said, right? Like the Mario mm -hmm. catching the princess, things like that. And it's amazing to see how the education side can be brought to the next level with tools like that tools like hyperbat so like you know yeah. i i would love to hear what 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 you have to think of what do you have to say about the literacy component about like you know for hyperbat in okay. terms of his game design yeah um as you know all schools have they, they have different key learning areas right klas and yeah. that changes depending on the year level and when you get to high school you might have like history and geography and sciences and you have all the stem mm -hmm. subjects and I think everyone knows what STEM is here. Um, yeah, yeah. The good Science. thing, uh, mm -hmm. but everything can be broken down yeah. into two main components, which is literacy and right? numeracy is the mathematics, math mm -hmm. focus, and then the literacy being the, the language component. And it doesn't matter what country you're in, that is basically, you know, uh, a major function of any education system around the world, literacy focus mm -hmm. and the language or the, or the uh, sorry, the numeracy focus. Hyperpad, you're able to do both. So it doesn't matter whether you're a STEM student, a creative student, an art student, even a history, a geography student, you can use Hyperpad to create apps, interactive books, you can do, and, and of course you can do games. Uh, one example is um, I had to present to the board of uh, AIS, Australian Independent Schools in, in the CBD of wow. Sydney. And they were like, can you, do, can you tell us how we can use coding to connect to uh, language focus? which is not mm -hmm. something that coding, even though coding is a, lang a language, they wanted to know about how we can connect to like Mandarin and how we can use it to teach different languages, English as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, here's an idea off the cusp. What if you were to create kind of like a game slash app where you had someone walk into a shop and if that was in Mandarin, then they have to ask in Mandarin, you know, I want this particular shop item and then they have a, a selection of different items and if they click on that item, it would take them to another window or another stage in the game they're called stages. And then that would come mm -hmm. up with a different language option boxes and they could click true, false, you know, they could kind of figure out what that item is by clicking on the different options, which would connect through very basic coding, different stage yeah. windows. And so we were able to do like a multiple choice adventure just using um, Mandarin and using basic um, Kind of like choose your own adventure. Do you remember those books? I don't know if you saw those books when you were a child. I had choose your own adventure. And if you say Ooh. yes, then go to page 56. If no, oh. go to page 27 or, or whatever it was. I don't know if you ever read those books. I but mean, we choose didn't have that. Adventure. But that's not really fun. <laughs> <laughs> or well, maybe it was just I thought this was like, like, yeah, in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but we, we had them here in Australia when I was a child. And, um, and that's, that's what we fun. did with the game. And so, I mean, you got to think a little bit outside of the box when it comes mm -hmm. to um, teaching coding. And it shouldn't just yeah. be a STEM focus all the time. 
Because, look, yeah. I'm not against science, technology, engineering, maths. I'm not against – I love those things. But yes, we do. everyone has um, an element of creativity, and we should mm-hmm. be utilizing that creativity in the programs that we teach. Yes, mm. definitely. We are creative human beings. Like, And the fact that education sometimes – like oppresses there no we have to bring it to the opposite education have to be a tool to bring our creativity side out of it so you know i mean we're we're coming to the conclusion of the of the podcast but i wanted to before we end see if could you give me like how would you describe hyperpad in three words i know i didn't ask you this before but if you had three words to describe like experience with hyperpad Uh, creative creative engaging and I know this is two words, but three words actually. Great learning <laughs> outcome. Okay, these are my three oh. words. Great learning great, outcomes. Great yeah. learning and outcomes. And that's really important okay. for any school, any teacher, any student. Great learning yeah. outcomes. It's really, so, really important. Yeah. Okay, so mm. today, if you are a teacher, if you are, uh, you know, an educator, a student here listening to this podcast, don't be shy to try, you know, hyperpad or try to just like game design and game development. It's it's a really amazing tool, like you know, amazing way to just be creative, right? Like as a musician, as an artist, as someone that loves technology, right? So, yeah, thanks for sharing your passion, Steve. And, and look, if there's enough you know, interest from teachers. Just to go through how to make a basic game, we could probably do another live stream in the future. How to just make a basic yeah. game from from total scratch. Um, so That'd be yeah, amazing. if you get enough interest <laughs> from schools or teachers to do that, let's let's do a stream. We can go through some okay. basic game design. Thank you so much. All Thank right. you, Steve. That great. Sounds amazing. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah. Good to bye see bye. you again. Bye, guys. Thanks, okay. guys, for watching. All bye the best. Bye. Thanks, RX Codes and Danger Bites.